Hello everybody! Today we will focus on companies and more specifically look at the consequences of a company being a separate legal entity. We will also look at the sources of company law and then explain the six types of companies that can be formed. In this lecture we will investigate the consequences of a company as a legal entity and briefly explore the sources of company law. We will focus on the types of companies and divide them into profit and non-profit companies. And then we will focus on the characteristics and essentials of profit companies, specifically public, private, state-owned and personal liability companies. We will also explain briefly what a non-profit company is and investigate what an external company is. So, different to a partnership which does not constitute a separate legal entity, companies are forms of business enterprises that provides for the company assuming its own legal personality separate from its members. And that is also one of the advantages of a company. Firstly, we must make sure that we do not confuse uh, the legal personality or entity of a company with that of a natural person. Because a company, of course, cannot perform certain inherently human acts, for example, drafting a will. But since it is primarily a business entity, it can occur rights and duties that are required for specific economic activity. So what are some of the consequences of a company assuming a separate entity existing apart from its members? Well, a company can acquire rights and duties in its own name. For example, it can acquire or get assets, accumulate assets. It can conclude contracts in the name of the company and sue and be sued in the name of the company. The company's Assets will also be assessed separately. In other words, the estate of the, of the company exists separately from the estate of its members. And upon sequestration of the company, there will be no effect on the personal estates of its members. And remember, this is different to the partnership agreements, because within a partnership, the partnership estate is linked to the partner's estate. And upon sequestration, the sequestration of the partnership estate will automatically impact or lead to the sequestration of the partner's personal estate. Also, in terms of a company, the member's liability is limited to the member's investment, different to a partnership, where the partners are jointly and severally liable. Because the continuance of the company is not dependent on specific membership, different to a partnership, a change of membership does not stop the existence of a company, like is the case with a partnership. Remember, when there is a change of partnership within a partnership, the partnership ceases to exist or the partnership comes to an end. But in terms of companies, the principle of perpetual succession applies and means that changes in membership does not affect its continued existence. Also, investments in the company are transferable so that each member can dispose of his or her investment without this affecting the company's continued existence. But there are exceptions and specifically in instances where the business of the company is being carried on in a reckless manner or with the intent to defraud 
we see that the court has the right to disregard the corporate entity of the company. So what does this mean? That in instances where the incorporation act or use of a company constitutes an unconscionable abuse of the juristic personality of the company, a court may declare that the company is deemed not to be a juristic person in respect of certain rights, obligations, liabilities or parties, and this will be as the court decides applicable. So what are the sources of our company law? Firstly, we have the Companies Act 71 of 2008, which came into operation only in 2011. But the Act is, of course, not a comprehensive codification of South African company law. And sometimes we see that the common law still applies, especially if it's not been expressly excluded or if it's not been amended or is in conflict with the Companies Act. Then we know that our company law and our, comp and our, especially our mercantile law, has been greatly influenced by the English law. We furthermore know that Section 39.1 B and C of our Constitution provides that the court must consider international law and may consider foreign law. So, it means that the English law and English principles in which our company law is rooted can still be considered and can still have persuasive power. There are six different types of companies. A company can either be a profit company or a non-profit company. If it is a profit company, it can be a public company. And a public company is a company which is not a state-owned, a personal liability, or a private company. Then we also get a state-owned company, a personal liability company, and a private company. A profit company needs to exist primarily for the financial gain of its shareholders. And there is no limit to the number of shareholders that can become members of such a company. It can be incorporated or founded by one or more persons. And let's stop for one second and explain what incorporation means. It refers to the legal process used to form a company and to declare this company or legal entity as separate from its members. Now, there are four kinds of profit companies. A public company, private a state-owned or a personal liability company. A public company has an LTD abbreviation at the end of its name. An LTD, of course, stands for limited. In a public company, shares are offered to the public and they are freely transferable. A public company can also register on the stock exchange, and in South Africa, we only have one stock exchange, namely the JSE, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And for a public company, there needs to be at least three directors. A private company has the abbreviation of PTY Limited at the end of its name. And of course, this stands for proprietary limited. Now, the memorandum of incorporation of this type of company, and we will explain what a memorandum of incorporation is in the next lecture. This memorandum or constitution of the company prohibits a private company from making any offer of its securities or of its shares to the public and restricts the transferability of shares or securities. For a private company, there needs to be at least one director. A state-owned company's name ends with the expression SOC Limited. So state-owned company, 
limited. And a state-owned company is either state-owned under the Public Finance, Finance Management Act or is owned by a municipality. And here we think of examples like the South African Bureau of Standards, the SIBS, as an example of a state-owned company. A personal liability company has the abbreviation of INC, or incorporated, at the end of its name. It is very similar to a private company, but it is very important that in the Memorandum of Incorporation, remember the constitution of this company, it must be stated that this is a company and it is a very specific kind of company, namely a personal liability company. And these are the kind of companies, uh, like for example, attorneys or architects, who allow their members to form this kind of company instead of practicing in a partnership. And in this kind of company, different to a public or a private company, the directors and formal directors of the company remain jointly and severally liable together with the company for the debts and liabilities of such a company. So this reminds us of a partnership, but what is different here is that only the directors and former directors of such an incorporate company are jointly and severally liable. A non-profit company has the abbreviation of NPC, non-profit company, at the end of its name. And different to a, a profit company, where the objective of goal is for the financial gain of its shareholders, a non-profit company must relate to the public benefit, support social activities or public benefits or cultural activities and often includes the promotion of religion or the arts, science, education, charity, or recreation. How does a non-profit organization work? Well, the income is different to a profit organization, not distributed amongst the members, and profits should be applied solely for the promotion of this objective or goal of the non-profit company. Now, you might have heard of non-profit companies, but also of non-profit organizations. The difference between the two is that a non-profit non company is not obliged to register as a non-profit organization. And that non-companies can also register as non-profit organizations. So, Non-profit -prof organizations are not limited to non-profit companies. What is an external company? It is a foreign company, profit or non-profit, that conducts its business in South Africa. And such an external company must maintain at least one office of its business in South Africa. And foreigners who want to invest in South Africa by starting a business or investing in an already existing company must apply for a business permit and they must invest a prescribed financial contribution as an applicant before, in, before then being accepted as an external investor or as an external company. In this lecture, we investigated the consequences of a company as a legal entity, specifically its rights and duties, also the effect of the company being a legal entity 
on the company's estate in terms of sequestration, the liability of the members of such a company, the perpetual succession, which means that the change of membership within a company will not have an effect on the continuance of the company as such, as well as the transferability of the investments of the company members. Then we say that the sources of company law include the Companies Act 21 of 2008. Also, the common law, if it's not been expressly excluded, it, does, it is not amended or not in conflict with the Companies Act. And then we also said that because our mercantile law and our company law is rooted within the English law, the English law still has a persuasive power on our company law and any disputes pertaining to mercantile law. Then we focus on the types of companies, firstly on profit companies with the goal or object to make money, to offer financial gains to its members. We explore the characteristics and essentials of public companies, remember, LTD and with public companies, the shares are freely transferable and they may be offered to the public. This is different for private companies where the memorandum of incorporation or the constitution of such a private company prohibits it from making any offer of its securities or shares to the public and restricts the transferability of these securities or shares. We know that state-owned companies or SOC LTD can either be owned by the state or by a municipality. And lastly, we know that personal liability companies must state in its memorandum of incorporation that it is such a personal liability company. It has INC or incorporated at the end of its name. And these personal liability companies are very similar to partnership in that the directors and former directors, but not the partners, are jointly and severally liable together with the company for debts and liabilities of the company incurred during the period in office. Then we briefly explained what a non-profit company is. So a non-profit company, of course, NPC, which has the objective or goal that relates to social activity activities or public benefits, cultural activities or group interests and where the shares or the profits are not distributed amongst the members but rather invested in the goal or the objective of this non-profit company. We also looked at external companies as foreign companies with at least one office in South Africa. These external companies need to apply for a permit to do business in South Africa and will also have to make financial contributions as prescribed.